Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Legacy. My name is Noah Mitchell and I'm the Senior Learning Experience Designer here at Legacy FM. Today, I wanted to share a bit of my uh, medical story with you because it's, um, it's, it's something that's become exceedingly important to me as of late. And um, it's also made me more aware of certain things that I think before I definitely took for granted and something that I think all of us take for granted. So just to give you a little bit of background, about two years ago, perhaps even a little bit more than that, I started to get these sensations, uh, just a little bit of dull pain. Sometimes it'd be really sharp pain. It was in my chest and it was weird. The sharp pain was like, very few and far between, but you know, other times it'd just be kind of this like dull sensation of like something's happening there. Um, but I kind of went with it for a while, waiting for it to clear up and it never did. It actually progressed and it, you know, got progressively worse. So I started getting it, uh, getting it checked. Um, unfortunately we never could quite figure out what was going on until I started to complain about having, you know, pain now what felt like, you know, in my windpipe, but definitely like in this area off of the sides on my neck and that pain also progressing got worse over time. And so eventually um, I was sent for an MRI of my cervical spine, which is in the neck. And it turned out that I am not in very good shape. While I am 32 years old, um, my spine is in really, really bad shape, um, especially considering my age. And um, that was last year and my pain has sort of progressed since then and I was unable to really get on top of it because um, my visits to the doctor were sporadic and I just could really never get into a good routine. Um, physical therapy was never even ordered for me at that time. So when my family and I just recently moved, uh, the first thing on my list because my pain had progressed even more was I need to get back to a primary care provider who would be with me in this and help me figure out what can I do? What do I have first of all, and what can I do? But here recently I really advocated for myself, which is extremely important for your health. Always advocate for yourself. I advocated because I wanted to get a full MRI done. I wanted my cervical spine in my neck, my thoracic spine in my chest and my lumbar spine, which is in the lower back. I wanted to get a picture of all of it. Well, when I got it back, lo and behold, I do have, um, in a lot of areas of my spine, moderate to severe spinal stenosis, which is essentially uh, when your spine, the bone or that, that hole where the spinal cord goes through, uh, the vertebrae start to narrow and that starts to compress the spinal cord, which can lead to pain, uh, numbness, and, numbness and tingling, which I do have now in my hands, arms, and in my legs. And um, it's just, it's no fun. So pretty much every day now, um, my, my pain has progressed to the point where I, I have it all, all day long. I have to manage it as best as I can, but I have started doing physical therapy and I'm remaining hopeful that I can strengthen my core and strengthen my body enough to manage the pain for a longer period of time. Unfortunately, with something like spinal stenosis, it's irreversible, at least currently. And um, so the best I can do is just to learn how to live with it and, um, you know, stave off surgery as long as I can. Now that's a huge backstory. <laughs> Sorry about that. I won't go into any more detail. Um, but what that gets me into is the topic of our video here, because I said it's something that we all take for granted and that's sitting posture. And I never realized until I was in chronic pain that posture can really make a huge difference even in the moment. Um, but more so over time in how your, your, your spine feels and your overall spine health and overall well being. And so I really just wanted to talk to you about, um, how to have a good sitting posture, because it's something that I'm trying to be uh, hyper aware of now, um, to just help myself out in whatever way I can. And so the first thing that you want to do whenever you are sitting down, because um, a lot of us work, you know, at desks, I certainly do now. And um, that was probably part of my problem. I had horrible posture. We tend to want to lean forward like this and hunch over. 
And unfortunately, what I've noticed is that for me, it's almost exactly that point at which I bend is almost exactly where my pain started all those years ago. And so I wonder to myself if, you know, just if I had worried about my posture earlier, if I could have prevented the progression uh, that I'm dealing with now. So whenever you sit down in a chair, you want to make sure that you support your back. And so you can see me now sitting down in my chair. I'm got my body pretty much pushed all the way to the back of the chair, um, especially making sure that the back of the chair is supporting my lumbar spine, my lower back. A lot of people will even get a towel and they'll put that there um, just to give it a little bit more uh, support to the lower back to make sure that you're maintaining that natural curve, not an overextended. You don't want to overextend the natural curves because that can be bad too, especially for someone like me with stenosis. It's actually the last thing that we want us to do is to bend back too much because it compresses your spine, but just enough to, you know, support that part of the back. And then just to make sure that you're seated in a way that can support those other natural curves throughout like the thoracic spine and the cervical. But yeah, you know, have, have your, make sure that you're pushed all the way back in your chair. Now, the next thing that you want to make sure um, is adequate is your chair height. And I know this sounds like one of those really bad, like intro to the workplace uh, courses or something like that or videos, but, but it's true. Um, in my chair, you can tell that I'm, I'm sitting in a specific way, actually, um, to where my hips are a little bit above, you know, the level of my knees. And then I've got my knees bent here, my feet planted flat on the ground uh, at a right angle. And that's because of the way I have my chair. Now, if I had my chair lower, you know, it, it wouldn't work. Let me get it up here. So now you can see that my hips are actually above my knees. And um, that makes it a little bit harder because when your body's been at that angle, it kind of makes me want to like bend forward and that can put some unnecessary stress, especially in my lumbar, I feel that. So definitely make sure that however your seat is adjusted, it's adjusted to where first we can get our, you know, body all the way back in the chair and support it there, but then also, you know, have our uh, feet planted firmly on the ground. So uh, the next thing that you might want to do if you're working at a desk in a chair like this, of course, just sitting in general, I try to sit like this now. When I sit on the couch watching TV with the family, you'll see me with a pillow uh, so I can push myself up to um, a point where my feet can sit flatly on the ground. Um, but if you're, if you're working, which <laughs> obviously that's, that's what this whole video is about, um, you wanna make sure to also try and keep your screens at eye level. Again, I don't do the best job at this. By doing that, you're really just trying to make sure that as you're seated, there's not a tendency or there's not anything with your screens forcing you to have to do this, keep your head down for long periods of time or keep your head up for long periods of time. Because remember this up backward sort of uh, position really compresses the spine and you don't want that. Trust me, you don't want that. Um, so yeah, make sure to keep your screens at eye level Another thing that you could check on uh, would be the position of both your keyboard and that you're using the right kind of mouse. So um, for, for my keyboard, I, I actually I don't have anything, but a lot of people will have like these little strips, these like foam, memory foam strips to support your wrist to make sure that your keyboard's at the right level. But then also my mouse, I've recently had the change because I started having a lot of trouble in my wrist. I'm not sure if that's because of the spinal compression or if it's because of something like um, carpal tunnel syndrome. But I got one of these mouses that uh, instead of forcing my hand to basically be completely parallel with, with the, the desk, it now allows my hand to be perpendicular to the desk. And that makes a lot of difference, even just uh, basically, I think this is about the position that my hand's in. Um, and it just really reduces the stress on that joint. Um, another thing you might want to consider is keeping anything that you'll need frequently, like your phone or, you know, water bottles, stuff like that. Just keep them close uh, because apparently, you know, really like overexerting yourself and like stretching for those things, um, you could really do some temporary or perhaps lasting damage to your spine over time. It's that overtime wear and tear really that we're trying to prevent here. Um, but then my last one, my last one is this, and I actually have another video 
on this uh, fits in with my whole Pomodoro method uh, thing that I talked about in one of our previous episodes, and that's taking regular breaks. So the one thing more than anything now that I realize, unfortunately, is that when I try to work, no matter how hard I try, I know that if I'm forcing myself past sort of a 30 minute mark before getting up and moving around, I'm detrimentally, um, I'm, I'm being detrimental to my spine and I'm not, um, I'm not helping my condition any. So please take regular breaks. You know, it, it's, it's more than just, you know, sitting in a good posture because even over an hour, an hour and a half, your body's going to stiffen. You need to move. And that's one thing my doctor even told me about my spinal stenosis. I was scared to do a lot of like exercises because I'm like, I don't want to hurt myself more. And he told me basically like, dude, you've got to move. If you don't move, you're not loosening things up and you're not building the necessary muscul musculature to support your spine in the first place. So yeah, that, that's it. You know, make sure you support your back, adjust your chair to the proper height, make sure your feet are on the floor, Keep your screens at eye level so your neck isn't in any weird positions that compress your spine. Position your keyboard correctly and try to use a different kind of mouse if you're having trouble in your wrists so those don't get fatigued as much. Keep frequently needed items close to you and then above all else, take regular breaks. And so I wanted to share that with you all and I hope that you've learned something from this video. Um, I'd love to hear from any of you all that maybe suffer from similar conditions and how you're currently managing that. Um, but I think the most important thing for us is to acknowledge that this is our reality. Acknowledge that, you know, things like what's happened to me happen. But in the spirit of, I believe, my last video, um, this is the hand that I was dealt. And you know what? I can still win the game. I just am going to have to do it differently than somebody who doesn't have, you know, chronic stenosis and chronic pain. But yeah, hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Stay with good posture and stay in good health. And we'll see you next time.